What's up everybody, it's Aggression here. Uh, I thought I'd do a video in the daylight. <laughs> um, I've attempted this video about six, seven times, or well, that's a bit of an exaggeration, I think three or four times now. Um, kind of a few different things thrown in the mix that have made it uh, problematic or not the best footage to use. Um, but I thought I'd do it um, on the way to work rather than on the way back from work which is when I'm usually doing it which is it's not too dark but I mean obviously the, the footage uh, as it gets a little bit dark on the GoPro just, does, just looks a bit crap you just can't see a lot um, so basically it's by it's, it's two things I've noticed with this bike um, kind of over the past few months and, and some of them recently or I say one of them recently because there's only two um, but it's two kind of things that um, I, I believe are really important, or at least one of them is extremely important, one of them is not so much. Um, but I'll start off with the one that's, that's not so much important and get on to the, the most important one after. Um, so what it is, as far as, I, as far as I'm aware, uh, Honda recommends to use castor oil. And I mean, castor oil are a really big, reputable brand, so I always use that oil. Um, now, up until recently, obviously, I had the normal foot pegs on the bike. This is kind of a bit of a long story of how it came to be, but it'll all make sense. Um, so obviously I've got the rear sits and as I explained that linkage bar kind of rips out and basically bottom line is that happened to me um, and I had to ride it a fair few miles back um, in third gear and as you can imagine uh, stopping and starting like this for instance trying to get the bike to go in third gear um, is not particularly the simplest of things to do so I think I uh, kind of just destroyed the clutch um, so I replaced the clutch plates um, well, it was slipping, sorry. Uh, it, it, when I was kind of in sixth gear on the motorway, or I say motorway, but whatever, you know what I mean. Um, I am allowed on motorways anyway, just to clarify that, but yeah. <laughs> kind of, yeah, at higher speeds in, in, in top gear, it would kind of just rev out randomly. It would just be slipping like mad. Um, so I replaced it, um, and it, it slipped a lot when it was cold. Um, obviously, the bike when the bike was cold, sorry. Now after it warmed up it would slip a little bit um, and one of my friends said obviously it's bedding in give it kind of X amount of miles and it should sort itself out um, and, and it did-ish um, when it was cold it would still slip loads but when it uh, when the bike was warm it, it kind of stopped slipping um, so uh, I kind of said oh it's still doing it again what do you think I should do and he said what oil are you using and I said the castrol and he went I mean this is the guy that's got the uh, 600 RR um, not that's any any big difference, but just so that you know who it is. Um, and he said, well, I've always used Motorex in mine. He went, just try that oil and see if it makes a difference. He said, it's, it's brilliant oil. Uh, and I believe Cash, um, KTM actually used that oil. I think that's their recommended oil. So I thought, well, when my next oil change is due, which was very soon, um, I'll, I'll buy that oil instead. Um, I think it's about the same price, uh, maybe a bit more than Castrol is. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll try that oil and just see uh, see what it does. Um, worst ways, I can always just change it back out. I mean, the oil for a litre, which is about what you use on this bike, is about £15 worth. So it's not not a great deal of money wasted. Um, so I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go, see what happens. Um, so I tried it, um, and it was brilliant. It really was. Even from absolutely freezing, freezing cold temperatures, the bike would not slip at all. Um, and as I've said kind of before or, or before making, well, making this video for like the fourth time now I've said this about a million times um, but I'm not sure if it's just a coincidence or maybe because the rear set linkage is slightly different so it puts a little bit more or less pressure on the gearbox or whatever and um, there's obviously loads of variables but my bike does not jump out of gear as much as it used to um, as I said before it was kind of like a every couple of day occurrence whereas now it's like kind of once once a month once every three weeks something like that it, it doesn't happen very often at all anymore um, so I mean I definitely recommend you guys give that oil a try and just see if it does anything and let me know if it does because I will be curious to know if it 
if it is because of the other things on the on my own bike like the rear sets for instance and the linkage that is different but i would recommend if you do try it uh, take apart your linkage and clean it up it's not very difficult um, it's really simple just kind of give it a clean up uh, and give it a good old grease use a bit of yeah like copper grease or something like that so that it, it all moves and functions very smoothly um, and then something else that massively affects it apparently is the chain if the chains are loose apparently the gearbox really doesn't like that but um, yeah as I said give it give it a go with the new oil or the Motorex oil sorry and see what happens and let me know because um, it'd be really interesting to find out if that if that actually is almost a fix for it um, I'm not guaranteeing it is but it seems to have done or, or made mine a little bit better um, so yeah that's that's the first one uh, apologies as well for being on the uh, the A127 I know it's a bit glum footage wise um, as I said, I am on my way to work. Uh, and this is kind of the only sort of time I get to record. Um, on the off days, on my day off, a lot of the time I'm actually doing stuff to the bike, so I don't have a chance to actually get out on it. Um, but obviously, things like that will change. Um, but I'm just trying to kind of get footage ready for, for my day off, and then I can get it all ready and uh, schedule it to upload on kind of different days, so that then it, it breaks apart my inactivity as such. Um, but yeah, the second thing is tyres. Uh, now obviously everyone knows tyres are important, but um, you won't appreciate how important they are until you've rode on a shit tyre and they've got a good tyre. Um, now the comparison from bike to bike is a little bit different. I mean obviously, I always said that the tyres out of my bike were shit, and they are. They really are. But obviously when you get on a bigger bike with better tyres and better branded tyres and all stuff like that of course they feel better out of the bat but you're not noticing things like that um, go <laughs> go <laughs> um, yeah of course you're not noticing things like that um, but um, it was very difficult to find tyres for this bike because the rear tyre is a uh, what is it it's a um, can't kind of think now 180-17 and the fronts are 90-80-17 yeah um, and what it is obviously that I mean you, you probably know right off the bat from the size I've just told you the rear tyre is tiny I mean it's like something like that thick um, which is small um, compared to the newer model I mean the newer model I think it's got a 120 or a 130 rear um, and I think it's got a hundred front so it, um, so my rear tyre is on the front on the other bike um, so what it is, when you try and buy tyres for this bike, when you look at the right size, there's front specific tyres, they're for the front wheel only. Um, and apparently that does affect a lot of things, and a lot of people said just go 10 up and things like that. And yeah, you could do that as well, but um, I just didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to kind of like, yeah, change from the, from the, the manufacturer, say, specifications and things like that. Um, yeah, I just didn't, didn't, want, didn't want to faff around with it too much. I mean, everyone's like, oh, well, you could go 10 up and you wouldn't probably have any problems. But it's just like, there's just too much uncertainty there. I mean, probably nine times out of 10, you'd probably be fine. But knowing me, I'm always the 10th one that's not fine. Um, so I just wanted to keep it simple. Indicators like that are so cool. I've been trying to get or see someone do it, um, and, and it happens so rarely, but it does it wicked. Um, but yeah, um, so... I was looking around and one of my friends got um, a set of Pirelli tyres and he went 10 up and 10 up on the front and 10 up on the back. And again, like I said, I didn't want to do that, so I just thought, oh, maybe you can only get them in that size. Um, but then I thought, oh, you know what, let's just have a little look around, a shop around and see what I can find. And I did, in the end, find them tyres um, for, for the right, for the right um, thing. The problem is I always look on eBay. Um, and a lot of them are not listed for this bike, so they don't come up when you type in like CBR125 tyres. You just want to type in the tyre size and obviously clarify that they are front or rear specific depending on what you're buying for. Um, and yeah, and find out. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to, trying to concentrate and not die and explain what I'm saying at the same time. <laughs> um, yeah, you want to find out if, if they are for the right, the right obviously wheel, uh, like front or rear, depending on what you're using it for. Um, but they're called Pirelli MT75s. 
And uh, bottom line was, I bought the rear tyre first because I didn't have enough money for the front. The front actually has just turned up yesterday, so that will be put on soon. Um, but yeah, so I got them tyres, uh, got it put on the rear, obviously I had the rear one first, like I said. Um, and of course everyone's like, oh yeah, be careful, it's a brand new tyre, get that shiny surface worn off and then you can kind of be a little bit more reckless as such. Um, so kind of by a force of habit, you always, well, I always, just kind of do a little spin up of the rear tyre just to get that shiny surface up just a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm not like, sitting there for 10 minutes spinning up the rear wheel or something crazy like that. Um, but just for a couple of seconds, just to get it, just to get the, the yeah the shiny bit off. And sometimes they stick all the stickers on them and it leaves sticky surfaces and shit like that. Just to get all the crud off of it, basically. Um, so I did that and uh, made my way uh, back to wherever else I was going. Um, and right off the bat, I noticed a massive difference. This was in the dryer, by the way, we'll add, um, the first time I used it. And it was it was amazing. You could feel so much grip through the tire. It was a ma it was like the the way I explained it um, to everyone that asked was uh, it was almost like you are running a severely underinflated tire and then you pump it up. That's literally how it felt. <laughs> um, I'm not saying I've deliberately run a seriously underflated tire, but sometimes when your tire pressure gets a little bit low, it kind of feels a bit strange. I think you pump it up and feel oh that feels wicked again. Um, and that's what it's like. But it's like ten times better than that. Um, so I thought, well, this is brilliant. It, it, it feels a lot better in the dry, but the real, the real reason I've changed tyres is because my ones are absolutely dreadful in the wet. Um, they just hate, the Continental Conti goes just hate wet. Um, any rain and they just want to slip all over the place, like I explained multiple times before. Go around and round about 20 miles an hour and you can feel the rear wheels stepping out on you. And it's nothing major, but you shouldn't be feeling that sort of stuff, you know, it's just not right. Um, imagine if you was doing it at 40, would the wheel, the, the wheel just give out on you then? And things like that. This, it was just so unnerving, um, especially when it's you kind of. This is my first uh, bike, um, and I mean you don't know any different as well. So you're like, well, we, is this just how it's supposed to be? Like, <laughs> and of course, it's not. It, it really isn't. Um, so I got that tire, and then I think the, the day after, it rained so heavily. It was amazing. It, the roads were just absolutely drenched. Um, has the camera just died? Bollocks. I bet it has. No, it hasn't. Wicked stuff. <laughs> um, I thought I heard it kind of do its little diatone. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it was absolutely drenched the roads and the tyre did not give up one bit on me. Um, and I rode, not excessively, um, but I rode at first how I normally would in the wet on the old tyres and then I've got pro... Uh, progressively a little bit quicker I mean I'm not talking like another 10 20 miles an hour but just pushing it just a bit just to test it um, just to see if I could get it to just give a little bit on me um, and it didn't at all and I mean it got to the point where I was at lights and I was um, kind of like nailing it not as hard as I could but pretty excessively that you wouldn't really do generally speaking in the wet um, and it wasn't slipping at all not one bit um, I mean, obviously, if you if you really, really went for it, you probably would get a little kick out of it. But um, obviously, that's expected. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> but I was just testing it, and it, and it really did well um, to the point where, as well, um, when I first got my Continental, I was always scared about throwing the bike over again um, because you could feel it just slipping out on you while you're touching them shiny surfaces. And obviously, when you've got the bike leaned over a fair amount, you don't want it to be giving on you. It's just scary as hell um, and everyone's gonna be oh you're just being a, a kind of bit of a fanny about it but genuinely not um, they really were awful um, to the point where I've had like kind of uh, better riders on bigger bikes than me have a go on them um, when I first got the brand new tire actually and he was like oh can I have a go and I was like well yeah obviously um, so he's jumped on it and he's chucked it round and round about and he did, we see the rear wheel just slip out on him massively. And we looked at the tire and you could see where the, where the chicken strip had literally just gorged in a bit where, where the wheel just slipped out. Um, so yeah, they really are, they're, they're dreadful. Um, so yeah, I've got the Pirelli MT75. I went straight down to my usual place after about 20 minutes of blapping around. Um, and obviously did, I, I did actually get my knee down saying that. Uh, not that it's a massive achievement, but I threw the bike over and I wasn't scared, I wasn't worried at all, and it, and it held up. It didn't, didn't give on me, didn't slip, nothing. Um, it, it was perfect, it really was. 
Um, so that's why I've now bought the front, the matching front tyre. Um, because they are, they are just miles, like worlds apart. Um, they really are absolutely amazing. So I can't recommend them enough either. Um, they are, they are so perfect. Um, in comparison, so I mean, if you've got a CBF125 or a CBR um, of this particular shape with these this wheel size, these tire sizes, sorry, um, definitely get them tires. I mean, even I'm not sure they probably will do them for the bigger uh, the bigger bike, the newer one to mine uh, with a 120. I think it's got 100 front. Oh fuck off. <laughs> There's that hesitant moment where do you just stop or do you not stop? And I was like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just kind of like a... I'm trying to think now. Um, I've lost my trail of thought massively. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if they do. If, I think that's what I'm saying. If they do it for the, for the bigger si tyre size, the CBR125, the newer shape to mine, or not, um, I would have thought they'd do. Um, and I mean, if so, then, then I'd, I'd still recommend them. Um, but I mean, the standard tyres on that bike are brilliant anyway. They really are uh, really good. Um, but for this bike especially, really, really don't get Continentals. And they actually cost me more than Continentals. I think the last set, I got a pair, and it cost me £105 with postage. Um, with these ones, I think I paid £50 dead on for the rear and £49.50 for the front. Not a massive saving, but like I'm saying, these tyres are worlds apart, and you're actually getting the better tyre for less. So, uh, you know, weigh, weigh it up. Um, they can be a bit of a pig to fit, these tyres, especially. Um, I did find it a bit difficult, um, whereas the Continentals are a lot easier to fit. But, I mean, if you're taking it to a garage or whatever anyway, they're just it's all the same. Um, it's a flat rate for a tyre change, uh, but... Yeah, like I said, they, these tyres are just phenomenal in comparison. They are so, so, so much better. Um, I really can't recommend them enough. So that's the two things that I noticed anyway, guys, and that uh, I would absolutely recommend above above anything else for your bike, uh, providing it's one of them two, that have them two sort of issues or problems. Um, but if you do decide to get them or, or try them out, let me know what you think. Um, I'd be very surprised if you if you fought poorly of the Pirellis in comparison to the Continentals, uh, especially in the wet. I mean, even in the dry, they're, they're so much better. You can feel the difference straight away. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think and, and the oil as well. Let me know if it, if it kind of sorts out that intermittent, I can't even talk, intermittent issue. Um, it certainly has kind of prevented it a lot more so for me. But uh, yeah, sorry, that was a. Uh, I was concentrating a bit there and just again lost my trail of thought. But um, yeah, that'll be it for this one, guys. Um, so I will catch you in the next one, um, and I'll probably be doing decisions, decisions. What will I be doing in the next video? I've got quite a log of, uh, of things that I want to upload or talk about. Um, so that'd be a decision. I might throw out uh, an overview of all the modifications next. Why are you going so slow already? Um, yeah, I might throw out an overview of all the modifications next. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. And um, I'll go top to bottom from uh, from standard to aftermarket. Um, so everything that I've changed. Uh, yeah, that'd be, be quite a lengthy video, but it'd be a good one to go through. So that's it for this one guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Where the fuck is that? There it is. Oh. I can't say I've ever done that before. I usually just go through the light. <laughs> It's the beauty of a bike.